Oh, welcome back. And for those of you who watch my videos regularly and are waiting for my last roof refurb video, sorry that hasn't come out yet. I'm still in the process of doing it. That will be at the end of next week, all being well. But in the meantime, I thought I would do a video that I've been meaning to do for quite a while now on this little chainsaw pruner. Now I don't do review videos very often, preferring to weave the tools themselves into the projects I'm working on because I think that makes them more engaging, not to mention more believable. But when I was asked to review this by Steel, and by the way, this isn't a paid for video, I'm not being paid anything to talk about it, knowing what a good reputation Steel had and the fact that I've got a few Steel garden tools already, I thought, well, why not? I mean, come on, look at it. Quite hard to turn down a tool like that, don't you think? So this is my honest review of the Steel GTA 26 Chainsaw Pruner. And this is honest because I've had this tool now for, well, since November last year. People who ask me to review these things quite often have to be quite patient because I want to put them through their paces. And I'm going to be really honest about this tool. In fact, one of the reasons it's taken me so long to talk about it is I just didn't know what my angle was going to be. I was confused about this tool. And so I spoke to Steel, I grilled a couple of people there. And with a bit of inside intel, I finally got my head around this tool and I'm ready to talk about it. So what is this thing? Well, they call it a cordless pruner. I call it a mini chainsaw. So maybe it's a mini chainsaw pruner. Who's it aimed at? This is the interesting thing. It's squarely aimed at homeowners. It's a gardening tool. It's not for construction or even for DIY. Although I've used it quite effectively on our pergola post, which I'll come on to in a minute. It's not meant for the trade. And why is that? Well, it's because of the longevity and runtime. You're looking at about 25 minutes on this 10.8 volt battery. And this is the first area that I think steel are missing a trick. It ships with just one of these 10.8 volt lithium ion batteries. Compare it with my Milwaukee combi drill driver that ships with two 12 volt batteries for a similar price. This is clearly to keep the price down. And also because steel are hedging the fact that a lot of users will already have the HSA 26, which uses the same battery. But I don't have the HSA 26, so I think they need to accommodate more of the market than this. A spare battery is 32 pounds. And I ask the question, is the pricing of this so sensitive that if you don't bundle two batteries in with a kit, people aren't gonna to wanna to buy it? We'll come on to what the competition is a little bit later. Would that second battery make this tool so uncompetitive? I don't know the answer to that. What I do know is that for me, having to wait for that battery to charge halfway through a job, after it's run out is totally unacceptable. So if I'm going to use this tool long term, I'd need to spend £32 on a second battery. One of the reasons I was so confused about this tool is that I was constantly comparing it to my 18 volt Ryobi full size chainsaw. And this is fatal. The one thing you mustn't do is try and compare this tool to a full size chainsaw. For example, Steelzone MSA 120, which with battery retails at about £300 compared to the £140 that this retails at. So it's a pruner. The point being, particularly for more elderly users who are losing the strength in their hands, perhaps to use secateurs rather than pruners, it's an invaluable aid. But is it? What do I mean by that? Well, the design of this tool screams for it to be used one-handed. And that was why we had that slightly overindulgent Wild West type pastiche at the start. Because when I got this tool, the first thing you think is sort of pistol, handgun. And actually, from a practical point of view, personally, I think it works much better when held one-handed. Because then you can hold the tool in one hand and the branch in the other. And with a lot of branches, if you try and cut these with two hands on the tool, you'll find that the branch bounces around too much. However, you're really not meant to use this one-handed and still are insistent that when you use the tool, you have your free hand on the top of it to steady it. And that makes it a little bit difficult to prune those slightly bouncy, thinner branches. So perhaps it's a halfway house for people who would like to have a chainsaw like this, but are a little bit too intimidated. Well, I've got to say, if you sit in this camp, you need to think again because Chainsaws like this electric 18 volt Ryobi are really not intimidating to use. With their 10 meters per second chain speed, which is a lot slower than your typical combustion engine chainsaw, this tool has been an absolute game changer for me around the garden and I thoroughly recommend you make the plunge and buy one. But back to the review, it's very simple to assemble with its tool-free chain replacement. You wanna leave about one to two millimeters of slack on the chain when tensioning it, a bit like you do with a full-size chainsaw. And you'll know if you've over-tensioned it 
because it won't run properly. The guide bar is a tiny 10 centimeters long. There's a battery status indicator on the tool as you'd expect. And it comes with this multi oil which are meant to apply two to three times per application or as the instructions say whenever you break to recharge the battery. Now that's a bit of a faff particularly if you're used to a chainsaw that has its own dedicated oil reservoir like mine does. And something I've got to be honest I forgot to do when I started using it. But again it's the sort of thing a, di a doting DIYer who is very proud of this tool wouldn't forget to do. No ear protection is required which I suppose is true, but with my tinnitus, it does jar on my ears a little bit, so I'd always want to wear my ear defenders. And of course, you obviously need eye protection whilst you're using it. It's got quite a nice non-slip rubberized handle, and it's light. I weighed it at just under 1.5 kilograms with the battery, although I think the advertised weight is 1.7. They say it's got a high chain speed at eight meters per second. Doesn't seem that high to me, but then I suppose I'm used to a slightly larger chainsaw. 52 mils of that oil is £6.92. A new, an extra battery is £32 and a replacement chain is £11.77. And it is worth replacing that chain from time to time, not to mention cleaning the pruner with an old paintbrush and not forgetting to align the arrows on the chain in the direction of rotation when you put it all back together. My original chain had become very blunt and so I noticed a huge improvement in cutting performance with the new chain in place and the tool fully lubricated. He has a slightly annoying protective hood, which in my case has already been slightly mashed by the blade. Some extra design work is required there by steel, I think. And before you ask, no, it's not just loose because I did try and tighten it up. And finally, the carry case is a little bit annoying. I had to Google just now where everything goes because I couldn't work it out after taking it out initially. And because it's open at both ends, if you don't store everything properly, everything obviously falls out. But well done Steel for giving us a storage thing, for want of a better word. When other manufacturers can't be bothered, I really like my tool, power tool storage cases. But please give us a bag rather than this rather odd tool roll. And somebody please tell me how you meant to fit the holster into it. And what about the holster? Well Steel, if you don't want us to think about this as a one-handed tool, then you're not doing a very good job of it with this pistol style holster. I haven't really used it if I'm going to be completely honest but I'm a big fan of tool belts and anything that frees up your hands while you're working and obviously I used it in that opening sequence today and it is very comfortable although with that little strap around your leg you do feel like a DIY version of Lara Croft. And what about the performance? Well I've used this a lot when digging the 65 meter trench for our car charger cable to get, get through roots and things that were sticking out into the trench. So I've really put this tool through its paces. It's been mashing into soil, sand, and all sorts of other nasty stuff that it shouldn't really be. And it didn't disappoint at this. Mind you, neither would a reciprocating saw or my larger variety electric chainsaw. But anyway, you can, it can only tackle what you put in front of it. For the jobs it was truly intended for, it works brilliantly. For example, cutting through the low branches on our bay tree, which it did with ease. It's good for this as they're static enough to use it two-handed as it's been designed to do. For clearing this dead tree though in the garden, it helps if you use it one-handed. With its rather puny 10.8 volt battery, I did find it conked out if I tried to cut something a little bit too thick as you see here. But anyway, I can hear you shout, well it's not meant for that Charlie, it's only meant to be a pruner. And on this point, perhaps the most surprising thing was how effective it was cutting through a four inch square pergola post that we needed to do to put an angle on it before we installed the roof on our pergola deck just after Christmas. And the footage you see here is my son cutting through this, which he'd never done before. And it just shows the appeal of this tool. He took one look at it and was like, oh my, I've got to have a work. I've got to have a go with this. And the great thing about this is because of the guide bar that it's got on it, you can get a really straight cut, which you wouldn't get so well with the flexibility, for, say, of a reciprocating saw. I know that because I tried it. Now clearly it's not really designed to cut anything this diameter but then the pergola post was a very soft wood. And just look at the way it chomps through this thick branch with the new chain fitted although admittedly cutting through something like this almost completely drained the battery from fully charged. So for those of you who aren't used to me doing review videos I hope this has provided you with some interesting food for thought 
before you embark on your summer gardening projects, even if you weren't thinking of buying one of these. And I hope also you can see why this tool has confused me. I mean, it's a mini chainsaw. Let's not split any hairs about that. But on the other hand, it's a mini chainsaw that we're meant to use two-handed, which does hamstring you when you're trying to prune dead or brittle branches lying on your garden floor. In which case a pair of secateurs or perhaps extendable tree loppers, even if you're of advancing years, would be easier to use whilst keeping yourself safe. And then for a complete curveball, there are things like this 20 volt DeWalt pruner I saw tools by design preview on Instagram literally a couple of days ago. Although it doesn't look like it's available in the UK yet and with battery will be quite a lot more than the steel. But on the other hand, with its mini chainsaw credentials, it's just a very cool tool to give someone as a present. Can you imagine buying this for your partner? They love their gadgets, they also love their gardening. This is just one of those awesome tools that they will thank you for forever if it arrives on their doorstep on their birthday or Christmas. And for me, who loves my gadgets, I also think this is a very cool tool. As I said at the start, I found it impossible not to say yes to get one of these, admittedly for free, so I could do a review video on it. But would I buy this tool if I hadn't been given it? I just don't know. I suppose my issue is I've already got my larger chainsaw. And sorry, Steel, but I really don't like the fact it only has one battery for the reasons I mentioned earlier. So I genuinely don't know where this leaves me, but I hope I've given you enough info today to decide if you wanna buy one of these if you were in the market for one and you chance upon my review video. And for those of you who've got one who think I might have forgotten to mention something, do please leave that comment in the comment section below this video because it will be enormously helpful for anyone else who's trying to make a decision on whether to buy this GTA 26 cordless pruner. Don't forget details of all today's tools, all today's tools, I suppose there have been a few, will be in the description below this video, which you can access on your smartphone by clicking on the little arrow or on your PC by clicking on the show more button. And if you want to help support me, get access to my behind the scenes stuff and daily contact with me through my Discord DIY chat forum, I'm also on Patreon. Again, there'll be a link in the description. And for those of you who've chanced upon my channel for the first time, I would love to have you subscribe. It would mean so much to me. You can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. See you soon.